With the key, we're now good to go down to the recuperation room where we will find Hypatia. First, of course, let's go find the Outsider Shrine. Cigar just standing here while it's tempting to push him over. Did I close my locker before coming out? Last time I left it open, someone left a hangfish in my jacket pocket. We're just gonna choke him up. And let's find a good place for him to rest. This is something I do a lot in games like this. I make sure they're, first of all, for um, useful reasons, I want to make sure the body wasn't going to be discovered. But if I have the choice, I like to put them on a bed or in a chair or something like that. I like to think it makes it look like they just want to fall asleep rather than getting choked up. This is the private room, so the hospital. There's not a lot of stuff here. Except, of course, the Outsider Shrine. I so enjoy watching history warp as words pass from the lips of one to the ears of another. Imperfectly formed, half understood, poorly remembered. In the years to come, the story of the Crown Killer will be twisted and bent, hammered like soft metal. By some accounts, a monster that had to be put down. By others, a victim of treachery, preserved because in the end, you found another way. But you'll always remember the truth, won't you? Your truth, at least. One of the few things Dishonored 2 did worse than the first one is The Outsider. For some reason, they decided to change the voice actor between games, and I much preferred the one from the first one. I also liked that in Dishonored 1, he appeared before you, and then he just sort of stood there or hovered there and talked to you. In Dishonored 2, he has this thing where he decides that he has to teleport around all the time, and while yes, that is a demonstration of part of his powers, I don't think it particularly works very well. Overall, I mostly enjoy the character as such, but the presentation of him is a little bit worse than before. This button calls up the elevator up to this little area up here. We could use this to go down to the fourth floor and find the way into the office, but we've already been there. There's another reason we're calling it up here for now. We are going to go into more details of that later. At this point on, we've found pretty much everything we need to find up here in this area, except at the very top. Here you'll find one of the first black bone charms, which is basically an extra strong bone charm uh, without any drawback, unlike the corrupted bone charms. Some of these are very good, some of them depends on your playstyle. This one, for example, Void Armor, means that we take damage to our mana rather than our health when we take damage. Now, time for an achievement. That is called the Fearless Fall, I think the achievement is called, and it is pretty cool. Uh, it raises a few questions of how exactly that ends up being a non-lethal fall, but hey, it worked. Locked up somewhere in disease treatment for his own safety. He was a janitor here as far back as the old Duke Theodanus. It's too long to work in a place like this. Gonna deal with these two guards pretty quickly. You need to be a little bit faster with the blink there. And you only have a few seconds to deal with this guy before the other guy turns around. All in all, you gotta be pretty quick to get that handed off without being seen. You have this little drop assassination thing going on where you fall, where you don't quite land on top of him, but right beside him and immediately grab him for a choke. That works out fairly well. And of course, that means this guy is very easily dealt with. 
We are starting to run out of guards in this level, mostly. At least the ones that we are going to run into as we uh, explore the area. There's still a few that we're going to get into, particularly the dice-playing ones on the stairs. But uh, this little body pile is now three strong. No, no, no. We are going to make our way back up the stairs, but again, there are some guards here. And they need to be avoided. They're on the side there, but mostly if we don't get in the line of sight, they're not going to cause any issues. This guard is sleeping, and, well... If I have the option, I always like to do a drop assassination. I suppose they shouldn't be called assassinations when I'm not actually killing them, but... A non-lethal drop attack, I suppose. Time for the dice players. They can get a bit tricky. One of the options you have is to do the whole distracting thing with a glass. It's really not happy with this dice game. Honestly, the easiest way is just sleep darting the both of them. You can get an upgrade for your sleep dart eventually that makes them fall asleep immediately. Sometimes you don't necessarily want that because if the first guy there had fallen asleep immediately the second guy would have been <gasps> what's going on? But the fact that it took a little bit longer means that we could hit the second one before that even happened You also have the opportunity to immediately uh, shoot them in the head with your trank dart which will knock them out immediately So it's one of those upgrades you might have to consider if you want or not that it's, it's useful in different options and not so much for one thing you can um, combat sleep dart immediately. We've got the keys, we can go here. And listen to these guys. Is Hamilton in there? How is he? He's losing it. Yelling nonsense for hours. Could you understand any of it? Something about being attacked by a monster one night. Some beast that wanted to scoop the brains out of his skull. I see. Keep this to yourself, will you? No need to spread silly rumors. Of course, ma'am. Let's find out if I can make him see reason. What? <gasps> what do you think? Ah, the beauty of the chloroform bottle. We haven't gotten to use those much yet, but they're basically s smoke stun grenades, whatever you want to call them. You throw them, it explodes, the gas knocks them out in a nice sleeping way. I wish you had more of them just to throw around, but they're env environmental things. So that's sort of easily dealt with these two. Um, one of them, we're about to go in and have a chat with Hamilton. If you remember from the Emily playthrough I did, that guy got a little bit stuck and didn't want to talk to me. Why? They have to know something. This time we got in there before the guard even got there, so we should be able to have a little bit of a chat with him. And that body pile is growing. Hey, Joe. You're Hamilton? Why did they lock you up? You know something? I swear, I know what I saw. Hooded. I just caught a glimpse. So much hate in the eyes. As if the world needed more of that. I'm not seeing things. I hope they didn't steal my notes. I need to go back to my room. They took my key. That's about all the information we're going to get from him now. I, I, could, I, I don't know what a fool I was. But he mentioned the key and some notes, so here's the key. I hope they didn't steal my notes. The rest of this area we will explore more thoroughly later on. Uh, part of it is this is the path to Vasco's office which we will definitely be using later on. Since we have the key, we can open up this, but we don't have the key to open up this. This is his little office, filled with a bunch of nice notes from back when times were better with him and Hypatia.
there's this little room where they are specifically keeping to make blood flies grow. Blood flies are part of the ingredients to make the Adamari solution, which is why it is intended that a bunch of them are around. If I can, I try to avoid fighting with the sword against the blood flies, but you can do it pretty fine if you stay back and you haven't fully aggroed them. I didn't take any damage here, as far as I know. Cleared out that room a bit. Although some of them escaped. In the salon, there's not much. There is, however, this guy who is sawing up boards to cover the door. I don't really know why he bothers, because there's not a lot inside there. You'd think there'd be something special and scary with the fact that he's boarding it up. We're gonna check it out later. Now remember we got the key to Hamilton's office. Well, Hamilton's office is at the very top floor. Even beyond here. If you just rush in, you will fail to notice the traps. Hamilton is getting a little bit paranoid, so he's trapped the place and make sure that no one can walk up. I say paranoid, he's 100% correct. There is someone that's trying to come and kill him. Mainly we're here for the blueprint. Uh, there's some minor things as well. There's some, some potions and things, but... Blueprint is the important reason you came here for. One thing you can take to comfort if you're playing and you're using up a lot of your pistol, you're using it a lot, making it more of a loud thing, you'll be fine. There, I think there are more pistol bullets around in the, in the game than anything else. So you usually don't need to worry much. It's one of the things I don't use that often because it is so loud. So even if you're trying to play and kill people, Shooting someone means you usually just get a ton more people coming at you. That said, later on you get some pretty cool upgrades to the pistol and it gets pretty fun to fight using that thing then. There's a special action that involves basically getting three possible clues to figure out what the hell is going on with Dr. Hypatia. Hamilton's thing is one of them, there's a letter that you can find in another place that's its third, and another one is talking to Vasco, which I think you will pretty much always do. You might remember this place from the High Chaos playthrough. It was full of blood flies and it was pretty overrun and it looking pretty bad. And there was a lady that had hanged himself from the ceiling fan. But in Low Chaos, it's pretty nice actually. It's not really any problems in here whatsoever. The book is basically a diary in which the matron says that she's been dismissed. And the implication in High Chaos was that she was so distraught she didn't know what to do that she hanged herself. In this one, I guess she just went home. That said, that's pretty much all you can find in the room. It's really not that important at this point on. It's time to go to the recuperation area. And here we see the blood flies. I've never seen blood flies this bad. This room can get quite annoying, especially if you, like I did last time, manage to miss one of the nests because it's in the fl uh, in the ceiling. It's not so great. But you actually get given as soon as you enter lots of tools to deal with it. There are three bottles of flammable uh, alcohol, which you can just do to throw. You take out three major nests already. And right there, there's two uh, incendiary bolts. Which means that you can just use some of the ones you already have to burn down the rest. That one is an annoying one. At least it was for me. And the process, it also burns over one of the um, older ones that doesn't actually spawn blood flies. But as you can see, they've calmed down now. There's the next one. Just double checking so that I do indeed have four. And then most of the room is cleared. 
Fire is pretty much the best way to deal with them. It's not the only way to deal with them, though. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are chloroform bottles around. We're going to show you how just to use them against the bloodflies and just how good they are. If you can find flammable bottles, you should definitely use those. But if not, these work quite well. So throw it here sort of in the middle, where I see the most of them. They fly up there and they get knocked out. With them all down, it's pretty easy just to slash them. They do wake up a little bit, but for the most part, with the nest gone, they'll leave you alone. Now, there's one or two left, so let's bring another chloroform bottle. Oh, don't worry, I know there's a rune there. I'm gonna pick it up. I'm just sorting out the entire area first. I'm making the decision on exactly what to spend my runes on at the uh, end of this level, because that's when we'll have a whole bunch. More raw whalebone. We're starting to get a couple of those, which is good. This is what we'll be using for crafting runes and bone charms and stuff. Eventually. Now, the interesting note here, I find, is seeing Lucia Pastor listed. Uh, I don't know exactly how long ago this was. I think it's a few years, judging by 1849. So she has been in the Adamari Solution back when things were better. Through here, you can find a bone charm and a coin. That's mostly it, though. Honestly, you don't really miss out on a lot if you don't go in here. And this one is where I start getting some issues with these bloodflies. But we did it, and honestly looking at it, we didn't really lose that much. And one of the things you realize quickly is that you'll have plenty of healing potions. So yeah, we've lost one, but I mean, there's an elixir right here, so you might as well just drink and you're back up to full again. And that means the room is pretty much cleared out. No longer will it be a pain to traverse this little area. Some more flammable alcohol there if you need it. Hello, Hypatia. I've gotten something under my fingernails again. What was I working with? Iodine. Hypatia is one of the more interesting ones to use the heart on to listen to everything she has to say and everything she does. You find out a lot about people using the heart. There's there's an achievement that involves using it on like 40 different people. And there's a lot of dialogue you can find that you might miss out if you just don't really bother using it. But I recommend it, at least for one playthrough, just to hear a lot about people. But now it's time to talk to her directly. <laughs> 